I'm Chief Warrant Officer 2 Al McGuire. I'm the Executive Officer at Bulkfield Company 9th ESB, and uh, we're doing MFAC training today. One of the biggest advantages of the system is uh, in this specific part of the world, Indo in the Indo-Pacific, uh, we have a lot of allies, a lot of partners that might not necessarily have the capabilities to uh, convert Jet A or Jet A1 to JPA or might not have access to JPA and their ability to make it. So we offer a different capability to our NATO partners and uh, being able to help provide them a, a service. More specifically, I think uh, coming along with the actually additizing of the fuel itself, we'll also be able to start to dive into the testing of the fuel itself uh, and making sure that there's a specific quality assurance and surveillance along the process, uh, starting at the refinery all the way to the end product so that our partners know how that process as well. Absolutely. So one of the things that we're trying to get after uh, in regards to like the EABO Marine uh, is time and delivering product to the end user as quickly as possible. So for example, we have a fuel system that we would set up or it would be pre-positioned in a specific location uh, and we would establish that as quickly as possible uh, knowing that there could be potential enemy in the area and getting that fuel ready and additized and issued to the customer as quickly as possible so they can get in and out and back into the fight. Expeditionary advanced base operations. So basically, more along the lines of the same thing, just making sure that it's, it meets the specifications for advertising the fuel and then it's issued to them as quickly as possible. So some things in our legacy systems, our fundamental systems that were taught at the schoolhouse are very simple. However, things like this, uh, such as the MFAC, are very technical uh, and very precise tools. So something as simple as a gasket inside of the piece of equipment can leak if there's too much pressure, uh, making sure that the additives themselves are properly c contained so that they don't leak or get anything on the Marines themselves because they are very toxic in nature. Absolutely, we're going to start to integrate this into our schools and making sure that this is taught not only at the NCO level uh, for laboratory technicians as it become a, diff a secondary MOS, but also in the basic uh, course as well. Uh, absolutely, so some of the things that we have to consider out here is uh, for one, climate. So we fight in every climate and place, um, but being aware of what the, uh, the environment of weather has to impact, uh, humidity, the cold, uh, and then obviously the austere environment. So we're dealing with fuel and we have to make sure that there's no dirt, no debris, no contaminants, anything of that nature getting into the fuel itself. Uh, and we work in those harsh environments. So making sure that we protect the fuel along that quality assurance and quality surveillance, and making sure that we deliver a nice clear and bright product. Uh, so I think that's something we have to make sure that we keep an eye on. Obviously, we're more available to provide a service to the customer, uh, but it's also something that we can integrate more often uh, with everybody around us and being able to advocate and display our capabilities. Uh, I think one, one key thing I really want to uh, make sure that is taken away from this, uh, this is not going to be something uh, that myself or a staff and NCO is going to be necessarily pulling the trigger on, for lack of better terms. This is something that a young NCO, a corporal, uh, going into a sergeant, uh, is going to be leading a team, a very small team of Marines, a fire team, maybe fire team plus, no more, uh, going out into their austere environment completely alone uh, with this equipment, doing this additization of the fuel, and they're going to be ones leading the fight and making sure that that product is clean, clear, bright, and going to the end user.